I'm going to discuss these five methods for drawing a cylinder. I'll review the traditional box methods, but I'll also show you an easier way, which I call the 333 method. The information is contained in my book, Ellen's Guide to Drawing Shapes, available on Amazon, and I welcome comments either online or through my email. So let's get started. For the box method, draw the box so the receding orange sides are either parallel or converging. To make the converging lines accurate, you would have to find the va vanishing point on eye level, but it's often good enough to estimate the convergence as I did here. Notice that these top two lines don't converge as much as the top and the bottom line, since the bottom edges are further from eye level. You end up with a box where the bottom is larger than the top, which is appropriate when we're looking down at the cylinder from our usual bird's eye view. Make the unseen edges dotted lines so the form is clear and we know which edges are in front and which are in the back. Next, draw the red lines so they either bisect the sides of the box going through the middle points or you can move the vertical line back a bit as I did here so the area in front of the box right here is slightly larger than the area in back and that shows depth where parts of a box diminish with distance. These red lines become the sides of the cylinder. Then draw the axis of the cylinder by connecting the middle points of the two horizontal lines so that this side of the red line equals this side. And finally, put in the ellipses using this blue line as the minor axis. And again, notice how these minor axes line up with the axis of the cylinder. The final cylinder has a larger base than it does a top, and the sides can attach either to the major axis of the ellipse or a little further back if you want to exaggerate the perspective. In this close-up over here, you see that the sides attach to these pink dots, which are behind the uh, major axis of the ellipse as shown by the black line. And this difference is most noticeable at the base because the ellipse is a little wider there. To draw a vertical cylinder using the 333 method, start with the three vertical lines here, one, two, three, and add three horizontal lines on top and three on the bottom. Make these spaces a little larger than the ones on top so the bottom ellipse will be rounder. Then you just use these lines as the major and minor, minor axes of your ellipse and you can just put in the ellipse, get rid of all the uh, lines you don't need, and you end up with a cylinder that looks exactly the same as you get with the box method. And if you need to put in a box, you can add that later on. Let's now draw a horizontal cylinder using the box method. First draw a box in perspective, then find the center of each end where the red diagonals cross. Connect these two ends with this blue line, which becomes the axis of the cylinder. And then put in the ellipses, and this is the hard part. Uh, but concentrate on having the minor axis of the ellipse contiguous with the axis of the cylinder. And you can see that it sort of slants. Uh, a common mistake is to make the ellipse upright, but that would be wrong. Uh, to find the sides of the cylinder, you connect uh, both major axes together and then get rid of the uh, construction lines that you don't need. For the horizontal cylinder using the 333 method, draw three green converging lines and then three lines at either end that are perpendicular to the middle green line. The distant uh, cross is smaller and usually rounder than the one in front. After you have these construction lines, then just use them uh, to put in the ellipses and you'll get the same cylinder as we get with the box. The problem is we don't know how long to make these minor axes uh, because we don't have a box to help us with that. Um, usually you can 
uh, estimate, and that's usually good enough. And with freehand drawing, some modest deviations in perspective may, in fact, make the image appear less stiff. Uh, remember that the major axes are always dictated uh, by uh, their attachment to the sides. To draw a cylinder using the tire method, overlap two identical ellipses or make one narrower than the other, keeping the major axes the same length. Then connect the ends of the major axes together using lines that are parallel to the cylinder axis. Shade the front of the tire and then finally add this small ellipse on the side so that this length is longer than this length, indicating that the front part of this tire is closer to us than the back part. Here are some examples of the minor axis of the ellipse lining up with the axis of the cylinder. In this first one, we have the minor axis of each uh, ellipse aligning with the axle of the wheel. Notice also that the lines connecting these two ellipses are parallel to the axle of the wheel. For the mushroom, the center of the stem lines up with the minor axis of the elliptical cap. And for the daffodil, the axis of the cup lines up with the minor axis of the petals, which form an elliptical shape. Here are some common mistakes when drawing cylinders. Don't have both ellipses the same size. Usually the bottom one is uh, rounder than the top for a bird's eye view. If we're looking up at the cylinder, it would be the top one that would be rounder. The rim should be closer to the back of the uh, cylinder than the front, and it should be thinner in the back. And the ellipse should have rounded corners that merge with the sides rather than pointy corners. So that's it on drawing cylinders.